What's up, Webster City Middle School? I'm Andy. And I'm Jaden. Welcome to From the Middle, Season 12, Episode 3. Hey, Andy, are you excited for thanks- Thanksgiving? Yeah, especially for Thanksgiving break. Here at Webster City Middle School, we have much to be thankful for. Yeah, in our report today, you will hear about what we middle schoolers are thankful for. So let's hear about fifth grade literacy from Ernoa. Hello there, I'm Renoa, and I'm going to talk to you about literacy. In literacy, we are writing pen pal letters. This will be the second time we wrote to them. I am standing here next to the vocabulary words from our book that we were reading, Miscellaneous. We have a vocabulary parade on November 30th coming up about the book. One of them is at 8.30 in the multi-purpose room for our pen pals to come enjoy, and at 10 o'clock in the Webster City Community Theater. My word is extravagant, meaning expensive, so I will wear a tiara and silk gloves. You probably shouldn't go around being an extravagant shopper buying stuff you don't need. Let's be thankful for our pen pals and the vocabulary parade. Now let's head on over to Lily to hear an important announcement. Hi, I'm Lily. The Project Explorer Girls and Boys have been working on creative problem solving. We have to think of a problem in the real world and solve it. The problem we identified was the damage from the hurricanes this year along the East Coast and Gulf Coast, but our project is going to be called Cash for the Coast. We are hoping every student and staff member will bring at least one dollar. There is going to be a container in each advisory classroom to collect the money from students. There will also be a container in the office for the teachers and staff members. Project Explorer members will pick up the containers every day during advisory. The project will run from Wednesday, November 14th to Wednesday, November 21st. The money the school raises will go to the Red Cross to be used for the people in need. Be ready to bring some change or even look in your couch cushion. Before we go, let's give thanks that we are safe and not having to worry about hurricanes. Time to send it back to the anchors. Wow, that was a very good project. Remember to bring some change for change. Well, now let's move over to see what 6th grade is doing in Iowa history. Hey there, WCMS. It's Sebastian. On October 24th, playwright Fax Gilbert helped the sixth graders do the Great Isle of History play with Miss Peter's class being the fish in the shallow ocean. Enter. Enter. Floss fish. I wonder why they call them floss fish. (laughs) Second was Mr. Stone being the Indians. They would tell stories of hunts with the, the deer being stalked by the hunter, being stalked by a bear. No, Next no, was Miss Shimmick being the early the settlers. Train. These wagons would get stuck in the mud, they had to get out of the road. Oh, oh, they had it on stuck in their head and mud. Where are you headed anyway? <laughs> Good job, man! After that was Mr. Lyons in the Civil War. (laughs) 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 Then was Miss Claybaugh being the immigrants. Let's find out why these families came to Iowa. Why they left their homes in Europe. These people are tired. They've been traveling for five weeks across the ocean. Plus another week or two to get here. And finally, Mr. Lyons did the schoolhouse scene. Are you okay? Well, that play certainly was fun. Now let's send it over to Hank. 
Hello WCMS, it's Hank, and today I will be talking about Thanksgiving. My favorite part about Thanksgiving is the food, and the family, but mostly the food. But let's see what our classmates think about Thanksgiving. I like the food. I like eating turkey. I like eating a lot of food. What's your favorite thing about Thanksgiving? Traveling with family. Seeing my family. I like to eat turkey. Eating my grandma's chocolate pie. Meeting with my family and eating. Seeing family. That's all for me, so now let's gobble on over to Anchors. Wow, that play was always my favorite. So how do you think we did at mock trial, Jaden? I think 8th grade did excellent, but let's see how 7th grade did with Bonnie. Have you ever wondered what trials are like? Well, the 7th and 8th grade Project Explore students got to find out just that. Hey WCMS, it's Bonnie and I'm here to explain to you how mock trials work and how our Webster City teams did. Basically, mock trial is when teams from all around Iowa compete on how well they can perf perform a trial based on a particular case. This year, our case was a civil case about a girl named April who went to a summer camp and supposedly got bit by a tick, which has caused her to get Lyme's disease. The plaintiff's side was trying to show that the camp was negligent towards April and her condition. Miss Ludgate attended Camp Morningstar in Monticello, Iowa for six weeks from June 18th to July 29th. The camp has been informed that the concern the camp had been informed that the concern for tick-borne diseases was on the rise, causing the camp to create binders of procedures and protocols. However, the testimonies today will show that the camp failed to follow through with their own rules. Not only did they fail to follow their own rules, but they also failed to correct, correctly identify and diagnose Ms. Ludgate's condition, which turned out to be Lyme's disease. The defense side was trying to show that the camp did everything they could and April didn't follow the rules that the camp had in place to keep her safe. And my co-counsel and I represent Camp Morningstar, owned by Grizzle Corporation. Today we will prove that Camp Morningstar isn't liable for the injuries of April Ludgate, but prove that she is responsible for her own injuries. She should have taken responsibility for herself instead of hiding in a corner and not letting anyone help her. It is true we are here today because April Ludgate has received Lyme disease. Although the plaintiffs are pointing fingers at my clients, Camp Morningstar, not Grizz nor Grizzle Corp did anything wrong. They acted responsibly. We used the witness statements to make questions and answers we would use for our direct exams and to make questions for cross exams of the other teams. We learned about objections and entering exhibits for our direct and cross exams so we could do our best at the competition. Each student was scored individually from 1 to 10, 1 being the worst and 10 being the best. The scores would be added up in whichever team had the highest score won. Our 7th grade team, defense side, won, and the plaintiff side lost. The 8th grade team, defense side, lost, and the plaintiff side won. The scores were very close, but unfortunately, this meant that neither team went to state. We definitely had a lot of fun and learned about trials and how they work. Now, I'm off to practice my law, but let's hand it over to Lucas. Hey WCMS, my name is Lucas, and Thanksgiving is coming up, so let's go and ask some students what technology they are thankful for. And what technology are you most thankful for? My wireless headphone. Wi-Fi. My phone. My phone. My iPad. My phone. My computer. My phone. My phone. What technology are you most thankful for? My phone. My Xbox. My PlayStation. My phone. I'm most thankful for my tablet at home. Well, that's all for me. Much gratitude, 7th graders. I'm thankful for the service of our veterans and soldiers. We had a special assembly for 8th graders uh, to honor our veterans. We gather at events like this to honor not just recent generations of vet veterans, but every man and woman who has honorably served since the American Revolution. Thank you, Republic, for now I think that you all will be grateful for this masterpiece.
Hey, it's Allie. And Reese. It's Thanksgiving season. And you know, no Thanksgiving from the middle is complete without a fun treat. Yeah, and for this episode, we are going to make a pumpkin pie, but with a twist. We are going to do the Not, Not My Arms, Arms Challenge. Challenge. What could go wrong? Okay, so first we're going to make our pre-made pie crust. So first we're going to unravel it. And then we're going to fix some cuts in it. Yep, got to knead that really nicely. And then we're going to take that beautiful pie crust and set it evenly on top. We just folded it like a taco and we decided to rip it up too. <laughs> so we're gonna maybe put it back over here and try this again. Okay. Wow, look at that, all nice and rolled out. Okay, so now we're gonna take this pie crust and gently put it in the pan. Okay, so now we're going to make sure that it's centered, yep, and then we're going to lightly press it in, and um, now we're going to be very careful not to cut ourselves and make the pie um, access come off. Look at this great cutting job. Then we're going to try to add some lovely little side folds by pinching. Yep. So you can even do it without looking at it. So that's great. Okay, so first we're going to grab our bowl. We're going to take out the whisk and stuff so it's not in the way. And now we're going to grab the pumpkin puree. So we're going to grab the can, yes, I love pumpkin puree. So now we're going to take our lovely can opener, yep, and we're going to take it in our right hand like that at an angle and press down and open it. Oh, um, a little bit more of an angle, yay, we're making some progress. Mmm, that looks delicious, doesn't it? So now we're going to pour it into the bowl. If we're having difficulties getting it, we might want to grab our spatula thingy, which is to our right. That's our whisk, to the right of the whisk. Yep. Now we're going to take that and scoop that deliciousness right into our bowl. That looks so delicious. Okay, so now we love sweets, so we're going to take the sugar so we're going to grab the sugar, yep, and we're just going to dump that in there. Now we're going to grab our vanilla extract. We're going to pick that up without spilling and dump it in there. Mm. So now we're going to take my personal favorite, cinnamon. Yep, and we're going to dump that in there as well. Salt, and we're going to pour that in there. I'm going to mix that all around. Don't forget the sides that are covered in sugar. Mix that in. Yum. It's a, let's pick up the bowl and show the, oh, yum. That tastes delicious. <laughs> Three lovely eggs courtesy of my chickens. Okay. So now we're going to take the first egg. Yep. Delicious. And we're going to crack that in there. And... Oh, and we just lost some shell. Whisking this so it's nice and smooth. And now, for the finale, we are going to grab the bowl and dump the 
filling into the middle of the pie. Okay, that looks good. Yum. Now we are going to put it in the oven. Okay, so while the pie is baking, we are going to clean up a little bit so we're ready for when it is done. So we're just gonna just toss some of the stuff in there. Almost, we'll get it next time. So okay, so now that it's done baking and ready to go home, you're just gonna add a final touch of whipped cream. So we're gonna put some dots around the outside of the pumpkin pie. Yep, and we're gonna put some on the corners, some in the middle. So now we're gonna have some fun in the kitchen with this whipped cream. So we're gonna take the whipped cream and spray it on my hand. Yum. Let's try that again. Thanks for watching us on From the Middle. Check the school's activity and sports calendars for more activities. Choices and challenges will be puzzles pizzazz on the 15th. Don't forget, your gratitude models your attitude. Happy Thanksgiving. See you next time on From, From the, the Middle. middle.